This is Sunday, August 3rd, 2014. We are at Kuravalingad at the Beth Aprem Nasrani Daira. We are in the presence of an eminent, a great scholar of the Sarik language, Kunamakal Thaumakatnar. Kunamakal Thaumakatnar took his doctorate in petrology from the Oxford University. It is a great privilege for us to talk to you. We are in the process of capturing the remnants of the Sarik language and try to create an interest in the younger generation. So one of the questions that I encounter when I talk to youngsters is, what is the difference between Aramaic and Syriac? Why do you use the word Syriac? Which is the right term? Both are right. You can use Syriac or Aramaic, provided you distinguish the earlier usage of the term Aramaic and the later usage of the term Syriac. Syriac is one of the many Aramaic dialects. Pagans spoke Pagan Aramaic, Jews spoke Jewish Aramaic, Christians spoke Christian Aramaic. Actually, the Christians who developed the, that particular version of Aramaic spoken by the Christians is called Christian Aramaic. That is the correct term to be used. Unfortunately, we find a transition from Aram, Aramaic, Aramayans in the Hebrew Old Testament. This transition we find in the Greek translation of Hebrew Old Testament, that is to say Septuagint. Wherever these three terms, Aram, Aramaic, Aramayans occur in the Hebrew text, the Greek translators made use of the terms Syria, Syriac, Syrians. They had their reasons to use these new terms. Actually, Aramaic was spoken in its various versions in Turkey, in Mesopotamia, in Iraq, borders of I Iran, in Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, and Egypt, and even to some extent in some pockets in South India and North India, and even in Afghanistan. When Christians became followers of the, the religion of Jesus Christ and the twelve apostles, they had to adapt their language, develop their language, so that they can better explain their faith, tradition, theology, etc. So, first century Aramaic became Syriac in the second century AD. Already we find the transition in the third century BC among the so, different speakers of Aramaic dialects. So one need not necessarily call Syriac or Syrian or Syria. If you follow Greek Bible, you will be using these terms. If you are following the Old Testament Hebrew original text, you will be saying Aram, Aramaic, Aramaic. Practically, you can use the term Krishna Aramaic and according to Sebastian Brock, the greatest the serious scholar. It is theologically correct, scientifically better to use the term Krishna Aramaic. Unfortunately, you call it Syria. You may use Syria, no problem. <laughs>
they came from Ur, somewhere in the southern Babylonia, present day Iraq. And uh, when he emigrated to Haran in south west Turkey, southeast Turkey, he spent some time there. There he was instructed to go over to Canaan. He went over to Canaan and those who crossed over to cross the river Euphrates are called Hebrews. Actually the term Hebrew means those who went to the other side of Euphrates river. It is not a Hebrew term, it is an Aramaic term. Our Abraham, Hebrews. Wow. And uh, those relatives of Abraham who stayed in Haran and the regions there, they continued to speak their forefathers' language, Aramaic. And when Abraham entered the present day Israel or Palestine, his language was influenced by local Canaanite language. It is from the mixture of this forefathers' language and Canaanite Hebrew originate. His former relatives spoke, continued to speak Aramaic. It is interesting to note that uh, between Edessa and Haran there is only 40 kilometers. Edessa in Syria, Syriac or Aramaic called Oraha. Syriac language or Aramaic language is called sometimes Orahaya. The, that Aramaic dialect which was spoken in Oraha became Christian Aramaic. Whereas the Babylonian Jews who spoke Aramaic gave birth to Babylonian Aramaic. And the Galileans who spoke Galilean Aramaic, and it is interesting to say that Galilean Aramaic is a mother tongue of Jesus Christ. Soon it gave way to Judean Aramaic, which was spoken in Judea. So oral traditions of Christianity was, were, were circulating for more than two generations only in Aramaic. But these oral traditions were happened to be written down in Greek. So he heard the written down Gospels in Greek. But Jesus, Mary, the twelve apostles and the first generation of Christians evidently spoke none other than Aramaic language. And after a few generations, maybe by the end of the first century, Christian felt the need of further developing linguistically their own dialect. They developed, but the name they always called Aramaic. Even in Kerala, our famous grammarians like Father Arayatanal, when he wrote his grammar, or when Father Emmanuel Ali revised the grammar of Father Gabriel, CMI, they all made use of the term Aramaic. In brackets they may use Syriac, but the title they gave Aramaic. Aramaic does not necessarily mean only one particular Aramaic dialect. It can mean quite a lot of various dialects, and Christian Aramaic or Syriac is only one of them. Oh, oh. The most important, the most developed of the all the Aramaic dialects. Ah, okay. It's a Christianized version of original Aramaic. Uh -huh. When we say the relation between Galilean Aramaic and uh, the mother tongue of Jesus and the Orahaya Aramaic, the connection is clear. Okay. In Galilean Aramaic you will not find any Christian literature at all. In Judean Aramaic they all di practically disappeared in the first century. They didn't develop into a literary language. Uh -huh. So the most literary language of Aramaic is called Syriac. Okay. You can call it better Krishna Aramaic. Uh -huh. Thomas Ocho, you spoke about different uh, kinds of Aramaic. Now, where does the language of the Thargum stand? Thargums can be of two kinds. Those written in Palestine.
written in Aramaic and those written in Babylonian Aramaic. Our interest is more in the Babylonian Aramaic, which is evidently more or less the same as the fourth language of East Syriac, the Chaldean. There is close affinity in pronunciation, in grammar, in vocabulary, whereas Palestinian Aramaic is slightly different. Evidently, Palestinian Aramaic is Western Aramaic dialect, Syriac or Western Aramaic or Urhai Aramaic or even Babylonian Aramaic are all East, the Eastern dialect of Aramaic. So, both in the Western dialect of Aramaic and the Eastern dialect of Aramaic, there are Targums. Oh. So, these those Targums written in Babylonia, they are more interesting for our theme. <laughs>
directors we have to see somewhere in the 10th century bc when king solomon was building the jerusalem temple he commissioned a phoenician king called hiram of sur famous biblical sur phoenician kingdom who was commissioned as the man in charge to bring the materials for construction of the jerusalem temple he had a fleet of ships going to different parts of the world he set sail to south india to bring materials for building the jerusalem temple we get indications from the old testament so what language did they use in international commerce evidently not hebrew because hebrew people were not open to see fair trade in those days it was the phoenicians who were in touch with the south india for example tamil scholars even today believe that tamil has to has originated because of the contact with the phoenicians so from the days of solomon onwards aramaic speaking phoenicians aramaic speaking mesopotamians along with the jewish newcomers used to come to south india that is the first point which i could find by the assyrian after the assyrian exile we do not know what happened to the 10 tribes of the jews many of them emigrated to kashmir to south india and mysoram even a few months ago some few hundred of mysoram people emigrated to israel as jewish people they were accepted as a as a tribe of manasi in south india in the regions of kadian bombay there were sanwar telis or vele israel community they also emigrated to israel but in kerala there were at least some seven colonies of jews well established before the arrival of st thomas on the scene here why did st thomas start from his original country in the middle east to south india because they were trying to convert the jews who were scattered all over the world the say has come so he was the speaker of aramaic and the jews who were emigrated here to south india maybe in the days of solomon maybe after the assyrian exile maybe after the babylonian exile and even in the second third century bc there were jewish communities speaking aramaic language so he came to his own the group which is spoke his mother tongue and the people who shared his faith so they became the cornerstone of south indian christianity mm-hmm. and by the first century after the destruction of jerusalem temple jews went over to those places where they had some relatives actually many of the jews came to kerala mm-hmm. after the bar kokoba war in the, the between the years 132 to 135 jews were scattered once again from the palestine then many of them came to kerala what happened to this jews modern jews who emigrated from kerala to israel they are all late comers they are not the earliest stock what happened to the earliest community they all became sandomas christians and uh, by the fourth century christians from Russian Empire, the speakers of Russian Aramaic or Syrian, they also began to emigrate to Kerala because of the persecution of Shapur II, whose persecution lasted for more than four decades in the 4th century. And then by the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th centuries, there were small groups of Persian Aramaic speakers coming to settle down in Kerala. for example in koidon in the 9th century there's a big community 
they also got merged with the local Christian community. Evidently, these Aramaic speaking Jews, later Aramaic speaking Christians, nourished the local Aramaic, which was very much influenced by the Indian, South Indian dialects of the day. Mm. So, I don't think that uh, St. Thomas Christian is a daughter church of the Mesopotamian church. It is uh, one of the original Christian communities that happened to emerge okay. anywhere in the world. Okay. And it uh, had its own identity. Uh, because of the later developments in the Syriac language, they also began to adopt the later versions of the language. Tell us about the transformation that has happened in the pronunciation of the alphabet of words in Kerala. It is a very difficult question, but I shall try to answer. People think that uh, the terms Mamodisa, Slosa, Karososa, Kandisha, Humba, Ranga, etc. are wrong. Not wrong. Please follow the early chapters of the advanced grammar of Father, uh, Father Thomas Arethanan or Father Emmanuel Thirdly. When Father Emmanuel Thirdly went to teach Syriac in Baghdad some years ago, evidently an honor for a Thomas Christian to teach the mother tongue of the Babylonians. He was teased by some of the younger generation like that, telling that his pronunciation is wrong. But some elderly deacons from Alakos came to the help of Father Emmanuel They corrected the young fellow countrymen and said, you are wrong. Father Emmanuel Telly is following the pre-14th century pronunciation. Oh, wow. You have changed the pronunciation of Syriac after the 14th century. So if Father Telly follows the pre-14th century pronunciation, and if you don't understand it, it is you who have to be corrected. Wow. And in some portions in, in Persia, the present day Iran, they had a different pronunciation. Whenever I put a dot, widow, saw, you pronounce S. Hmm. If it is wrong, why you call Athurians Assyrians? There the Tav is used. Oh. Tav soft is called uh, Assyrians. That means that it is the pronunciation of Kerala people that is to be adopted by the Syriac Grammarians elsewhere. Wow. Or another example, ah. from the south of Iraq and Iran, there is a community which is called Mandaeans who immigrated to America, Canada and Australia recently. They were practically unknown to the outside world before the 20th century. They traced their origin to the followers of John the Baptist. Evidently, a Jewish pagan group somehow associated with the followers of John the Baptist and they, we know from the second century KD, they had a different dialect of Aramaic called Mandaeans. Where from the term Mandaeans come? Where from the N, N sound come? It is not from Syriac. But the term which they use is Mandad Haye. And in all the European pronunciation, it is Madad Haye. Why do the language is called Mandaeans? Thousands of people speak this language even today. So, in, if you go to ancient Akkadian, as another pre-biblical Mesopotamian language, you find the same example. So, why or where from the Christians in Kerala got the second century BC pronunciation or second century AD pronunciation and the pre-14th century pre 14th century pronunciation. Evidently, it's an indication that we had some connection with the pre-Syriac, pre-developed, pre-Christian Aramaic dialects. And this pronunciation is to be sought not in the AD era, but in the BC era. Where from? Not from the Christians we got it, but the Jewish people, maybe they came through Alcos, Maybe they came to Urmia or Iran. So that pronunciation is particularly to us to be preserved.
Interesting, very interesting. So, say for example, we used to say Shambhag Lashan, Shambhag. Ramban, another example. Ramban, See, but we wrote Rabban, or we write Rabban, but there is a there is a doubling for B, and whenever there is a doubling for bass, East Syrians used to call add a nasal sound in Kerala, and that nasal sound is not uh, added in Kerala. Same nasal sound we find in Acadia or Tamagra, Ramban. That was the connection that you mentioned. But then, yeah. that nasal sound, yeah. although they wrote uh, without the nasal, without the end. And they are also called Nazarians. Ah, okay. That's the interesting thing. They were Jewish. They are Jewish. Ah, ah. So somehow they were separated from the followers of John the Baptist. Ah. Their traditions go back to the second century. So we may, we, we may be speaking about the second century pronunciation of particular Aramaic dialect. And uh, never ever Aramaic had the same pronunciation throughout the world. So it was different from place to place. It was, if it was spoken in Alakos, why not in Kerala? Yeah. Or yeah, in yeah. different parts of yeah. I think the, it's a Persianized Aramaic version, if we speak. Uh -huh. Maybe he came to Persian Christianity first and then from there to the Mesopotamian Christianity. Mm -hmm. And the earlier Persian cross connections uh -huh. and the Persian Pallavi inscriptions of the third, fourth century mm -hmm. we find in the early mm -hmm. centuries of the century here in mm -hmm. South India. Mm -hmm. So maybe Europeans always simplified or simplified the arrival of Christianity in South, in South India. Mm -hmm. We have to begin somewhere in the days of Solomon in the Old Testament of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And the, if the book of some of the books of Old Testament were written not in Hebrew, in Aramaic, it is Imperial Aramaic. Mm -hmm. So that version in which mm -hmm. book of Yasra, book of uh, Daniel, were written Biblical Aramaic, which is Imperial Aramaic. Mm -hmm. in, that is the mm -hmm. earliest developed stage of Aramaic. Mm -hmm. So if you use Aramaic only in connection with the Bible, not in the connection with the Christians, it's a strong approach. Okay. something about your doctoral dissertation at the Oxford University. Well, it was about the theology of divine names and the genuine words of St. Ephraim. Divine names? Yeah. How can we speak about God in human terms? It's a philosophical problem for the modern world. Here is a fourth century poet perhaps one of the greatest theologians Christianity has ever produced and evidently the best poet theologian of Christianity or any other religion he is very often neglected by the Western theologians first of all they do not know Syria so evidently he represents a sort of pre nicene biblical Semitic Christianity Semitic Christianity got transplanted in the Greek atmosphere, Greek philosophical and the Roman Latin world by the 4th century. But the original Christianity, Aramaic speaking Christianity, went its own way. So it was evidently neglected after the 4th century Constantinian era. I wanted to study the original Christianity before the pre I say count it, 325. The best medium I found was Sunday Friday. I translated his English hymn, his Estangular Syriac hymns in other words, some portions in English. That was it. Thomas, did you 
you gave your life to study as you say now pre nicene syriac christianity and you spent your all your resources for this cause and finally you started this institution base aprem nasrani daira tell us a short history of this project of yours it was in 1992 when i was speaking to the oriental scholars assembled in kottayam under the auspices of oriental study forum i was approached to speak on the present day crisis in the suro malaba church i took the theme the problem of latinization you know exit till the article remains unpublished because of the revolutionary character of the article twice it was rejected by some scholarly groups thinking that it is too much anti latin but i am not speaking about the latins it is about all about the syria christians indian christians martha manasanis who got connection with their roots and who became transplanted into european mentality european culture and anti indian to some extent pro western not in political terms but in religious philosophical terms a, a very impoverished version of christianity they had adopted i was raising this problem with a deep awareness that we have to recover our identity only to survive if one branch of christianity which is apostolic which is planted in the first century gets lost is a terrible loss for catholicity of christianity unless and until you include these sort of fringe groups inside the various big family of catholicism you are losing you are one of the fingers one of the eyes one of, one of the ears one of your members <laughs> the whole body christianity is not monolithic it has many faces one of the original face apostolic face is indian face which is nasrani face which is martama christianity so i was pointing out this issue but one pro one of the process of our father father late father koi kodi understood you are right we have to call together that was my proposal we have to call together as synod in 1991 i put forward this problem and there was no synod from my class and it too only father koike kodi canon is agreed with me you are right we have to this on the diamber synod a radical step well nothing against the diamber all our methodology of understanding christianity living christianity spreading christianity the style of life of lay people bishops and ordinary people the whole attitude has changed and some north indians see us as vestiges of colonial product but we are not colonial if our forefathers had been connected to the world of revelation from the days of old testament from the days of solomon or the jewish immigrants we have a claim to be men of the soil and it is necessary first and foremost we are nasrani that is why i am i always say i am not a christian because i am a nasrani <laughs> that followers of nasrani jesus was a nasrani about nasrani we hear in the old testament is a prophetic lifestyle i mean within the christianity is a prophetic lifestyle not the later versions which developed somewhere in the roman empire on the greek cultural world is our roots all we have to see is our christianity right from the base of jews who received the old testament revelation and what are the seeds of christian is sown in the soil in the days of these that connection should not be should not be forgotten it was this great conviction which 
led me to the foundation of a daira to teach Syriac, to pray in Syriac. All the prayers here are in Syriac, in East Syriac. The readings from the Old Dutch and New Testament are taken in Ariyal, in Then all people are praying in Ariyal. Four has no language. You can speak in, it's called in Tamil or English or in Greek or in Chinese or Japanese or in Syriac. And Syriac, why I insist upon it? Because it is a, one of the languages of Revelation. And Indians should be proud to have been associated with this language for so many centuries. When J.B. Segal, late Jewish scholar, the famous author of Edesa, the Blessed City, met Father Placid, the great luminary of the Surah Madhavajas in the 20th century, he asked this question to Father Placid. Father Placid, I have a question. I have a complaint. You have people who are being associated with this language from Ireland. Why you are not trusted? Yeah. The culture is the Yes, Now to remedy that. Who will remedy that? Father, many of the CMA fathers were great serious scholars. Father Emmanuel Zelli, Father Prasit, Father Guru Yohan, Yohan Bosco, Totakara, many others. That generation is dying out. Nobody is teaching seriously Syriac anywhere in the seminaries or in the universities. So we are losing our cultural, religious patrimony associated with the world of revelation. It's a mistake and this mistake has to be repaired somehow. As a student of Syriac, I don't think I am a scholar of Syriac, a student of Syriac. Father Placid or Emmanuel Tendi are scholars. I know they student now. I spoke with Father Manu Gandhi, Father Guru Yohan, Yohan Dosko Totagara, and we decided to meet together in 1991 on the 20th of March because it is the day of the demise of Father Thomas Tara Imakan, the great administrator of the church, uh -huh. and his Vartamana person gave the impetus. Mm. There he speaks about the importance of Syriac. Vartamanam Pustam speaks about the importance of Syria? At least once in a while. Oh. So, our, our identity is somehow associated with this language and all what is written in this language. Why should I deny the identity of Christian identity? Because I don't know, I do neglect the study of Syria. So, in order to continue the study of Syria, somehow I started the institution in Ramavaram, I own parish and the, at the tomb of Father Thomas Farai on 1999, March 20th. Because I didn't find the, any others interested in disowning time birth. If the bishops or the priests or the theologians had taken it up, I would not have perhaps started this daira independently and perhaps joined one of them who might be starting the daira. Father Emmanuel Tedli was helping us to teach Syria here. We, for two, two years, we have been meeting here, praying in Syria and uh, studying Syria. We have covered the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Italy, and John by myself, and now we are taking Syria text of Luke. They people are coming, not the priests and the sisters. Maybe lay people are more open to the original traditions of this branch of Christianity. Why should we close the doors upon the face of the lay people who seek the truth? So it is open for all. Anybody is welcome. Not, not only Christians, anybody is welcome. Pray in Syria. Thereby, at least a Syria corner might remain here or elsewhere. So I hope that uh, the era will survive after me. <laughs> Otherwise, you have the thousands of books in Syria, even manuscripts. And in the library. Anybody here. who is interested can take over. Anybody who is interested in Syria. Anybody who is interested in preserving the language, learning the language, 
praying in the language. So it is, I have the right to make use of the language in which Adam spoke. Or in the days of Abraham, those people who were looking for God spoke. So why should we neglect their language which originated in, in the days of the revelation though? What is the etymology of the word daira? Daira is a place where you gather sheep into a fold. So the flock is inside a boundary. That boundary which protects the flock is called daira. Oh. The place is you dwell where the sheep is safe in the pastoral ambient of the biblical world. Mm. That is the term which is used for a monastic institution in the Syrian tradition, mm. especially in the East Syriac. Oh, okay. And the East Syriac monasticism is not the daughter of Egyptian monasticism. It is pre-Egyptian. It goes back to the days of Prophet Elijah, uh, or Old Testament prophets, the Nasrite people who took on a special vow for a lifetime, lifetime or for a temporary period. Mm. Jesus was a Nasrite. John the Baptist was a Nasrite. And the earliest connections between the origins of Christianity and the Nasrite Jews, a saints perhaps, is fascinating. East Syria Christianity inherited this pre-Christian Old Testament heritage of Judaism. So there is a continuity between the Old Testament, New Testament and the Syriac and East Syriac understanding of Christian world vision. So study Syriac means living in the days of Jesus Christ, living in the days of Prophet Elijah, sharing in the scene of, for the people of God in a good sense. Unfortunately, Christianity become, has become a kind of paganized religion, too much involved in this worldly quarrels, ambitions, etc. And it is a deviation from the biblical track. Not to recover the biblical identity of Jesus and Christianity, St. Thomas Christians have a role. This role is very much highlighted because of the historical connection between the pre Christian Jewish community here. So we have somehow inherited a right to continue the world of revelation, to be in the world of revelation. Mm. Of course, with the later ramifications of all what faith means. Mm. So if you neglect the study of Syriac, you will be losing touch with the most original version of Christian interpretation. That is a crime against Christian theology. I have nothing to say against the Greek Christianity or Latin Christianity. Well and good. But for us, we have a different kind of Christianity which happened to be planned in India. This is providential. We cannot neglect our roots, borrow the feet of somebody else and walk. Of course, we can learn from others. We can learn from the Latin tradition, from the Roman tradition, or from the European tradition, or from the Greek Western tradition. All these traditions lack the linguistic connection with the world of revelation. Lack. Yeah. Whereas Syria has it through Aramaic. So why should I cut my links? It's the days of Solomon, mm -hmm. and prophets were alive. And Christianity was only a dream in the mind of prophets. Mm -hmm. So we should not cut our connection with the roots. So Syriac is a medium for me to travel to the days of Solomon, to the days of Prophet Elijah, to the days of John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, twelve apostles, Apostle Thomas, and the great Saint Ephraim, or great mystic. 3rd century, 7th uh, century Christian mystic from Qatar, mm -hmm. Isaac and Nibir. Mm -hmm. And we should remember that technically, theologically, historically, he should be termed a Nestorian. But that Nestorian is accepted by the Greek Orthodox as one of the greatest mystics of the Christianity. Same person is accepted by the Catholics and non Catholics, even Coptics. Whereas Coptics, uh, Cops normally 
are against the Nestorians. So a Nestorian heretic of the 7th century, who was an ordinary monk, who was made a bishop in Nineveh, resigned the episcopacy after five months or six months, went back to his monastery. He lived a life of his own. He became blind after reading the Bible. So we do touch with such personalities once in English history. And he is only one of the names. There are anonymous authors. For example, the author of the Book of Steps in the 4th century, mm. or the 4th century Afrahat. You don't find such Christian mystics elsewhere in the Greek or Latin world. St. Augustine is nobody in compared with Afrahat or anonymous author of Book of Steps or Ephraim. I don't believe in the importance of St. Augustine, mm. but Augustine is the best known name mm. from the Christian theologians mm. in Europe. Mm. It's a drawback. Mm -hmm. We have richer theologians, greater mystics, mm -hmm. or Cappadocian fathers taken to the Basil the Great, Gregory Nazianzus, or Gregory of Misa. Less weighty, once we put them in balance along with Ephraim, the Syria. Mm -hmm. So, in order to study a pre Nicene Christianity, it's not a crime, it's my birthright. <laughs> so, I have a right to study Syria, speak in Syria, or Pray in Syria. Mm -hmm. So it is not nothing strange. Mm -hmm. Maybe it appears a little strange in the world which has left out studying Syria. Mm -hmm. Because people do not understand the real importance of classical languages now. Mm -hmm. They go for easy topics. Mm -hmm. Who among the Indians study seriously Sanskrit? Yeah, yeah. It's a loss to the culture, to the philosophy, to the vision of life of India. Indians should study san Sanskrit. Indians should study Tamil, or Indian Christians should have a right to go after the pursuit of Syriac researches. Mm -hmm. So it is nothing strange. It is quite normal mm -hmm. to be a student of Syriac. That is what they yeah. assert. Beautiful. You are a zealous preacher. You remind me of the words of Prophet Eli Elia. I am burning with a seal for the Lord. My dear, what was the method? Yeah, the, the karma is out. Yeah. And the, and the mana. Well, why that was adopted with the karma? Once you are a follower of God, you will be zealous for things of God and things of man. And the prophets were that. Mm. We, they may appear to be a bit strange for us. Yeah. The Old Testament, or the New Testament. Yeah. Apostles were strange people. Mm. No, they left out fishing and after a wanderer. But yeah. that changed the face of the world. Yeah. So we have received a commit commitment from our forefathers. Mm. When did this transition happen in your personal life? As a seminarian, uh, what was your state of mind? No. I never thought that I would have won for seminary studies. I had written my application for college studies, then threw it out into the waste box and into the church. All of a sudden, the same day I got admission to the seminary. How old were you? I was 15, 16. Which seminary? Where? In the minor seminary of Paradises. The, there is only one reason when I look back. Why did I join the seminary? Because there was Syria Kurbana celebrated by Father John the Platotum and others in my younger days when I was a little boy. So that remained in my in the background of my conscience. Wow. So it was the only attraction. And to my great surprise I found that Father John the Platotum was teaching of Syria in minus religion. Little Syria was taught. That was the beginning. Ever since I was after Syria, and as long as I live, the search will continue. So it is, uh, it has, I don't know how it happened to attract me, and people, my own classmates used to tease me, Bhaktan, because whenever... Uh, Bhaktan? Yeah. <laughs> because they noticed something in me. And I was actually in the Syria At the age and of 15. Yeah, as a young man, even before. When, when I was 10 or 12. So something was dragging me into the world of the different world. 
I didn't understand anything. But we do, how much do we understand the God and it tells you. If we pray in English or in Tamil or in Malayana, it makes no difference. It is real. We, somehow, it is the language of revelation. Why did Jesus speak in Syria or in Al-Saramai? He could have spoken in Hebrew. Of course, he knew some Hebrew for reading the text of the Old Testament. But he was using the language of the Jews who were associated with the world of revelation, the Old Testament, New Testament. Mm -hmm. It was the international commercial language. Mm -hmm. Now, very few speakers for it. Mm -hmm. And oh. it is not for the sake of uh, popularizing it in everyday usage, but for the sake of preserving our Christian heritage, mm -hmm. our Jewish Old Testament heritage, where from the Christianity of the New Testament Demar and which continued in the days of St. Ephraim, which continues in the liturgy of the Jesus Reign Church. Thomas you mentioned with great emotion uh, the name of Father Emmanuel Tully and you also mentioned his uh, uh, trip to Iraq to teach Syriac. Uh, could you please, now he is sick and we don't think he will be able to be a teacher again. Uh, could you please speak a little more about him, his ro role in the preservation of the Syriac language Ever since the younger days of Father Iman Nithirdi, he loved Syriac. He went after Syriac language. Throughout his life, he was associated with the teaching, translation of Syriac literature into English and Malayalam. The translation of Syriac literature into Malayalam is invariably connected with the name of Father Manitandi. Of course, Father Prasad is there, but he didn't translate much into Malayana. Trinni is the, Emanitandi is the translator of Sri Vittardi for the Sri Ramarva Church. Oh. Unfortunately, it is not that much recognized by the scholarly world or the hierarchical world or the people original in the world. Mm. I was shocked for how many years of silent translation work he was doing in the dark holes of labor race. Mm. And uh, he writes poetry in Syriac, in English, in Malayalam. And he is talented to speak in Syriac. Not only that, he loved the liturgical heritage of his church, of course, in vernacular or in original Syriac. Unless you know the original Syriac, you will not know the vernacular. You will be mistranslating, you will be using music for some of the melodies. There are nearly 100 melodies which we have lost. 100? Yeah. Nobody knows how many. But practically, of these three melodies, 19 or 20 have been translated, or we have more or less three mm. melodies in, in, in Mariana. Mm. But what about the other? many dozens of melodies. They are lost forever without a trace. So, Father Emmanuel is not a musician, he is a grammarian. And uh, indeed, one of the greatest Sri grammarians I have ever come across in the whole world. In the whole world? Yeah. Wow. Europeans, they study grammar, they write grammar, but compare his grammar which has been reprinted by the Ananam Press for year after year. There is no substitute. Ah. Of course, Father Aretha uh, grammar is bigger one, hmm. but the clarity with which he explains grammar. When he knows something he says, he knows. And that is the last word of grammar, especially in South India. There might be greater comedians, well-known scholars in the other parts of the world. But about the Indian Syriac, Nobody is a greater authority than Imam wow. so For example, when he speaks about the second century pronunciation of Syriac, the whole world does not think about the importance of what he writes. He connects the 
some particular pronunciation of Sirayak in the second century, maybe Chastity historians should think how and why this particular second century pronunciation has survived only in Kerala. That is why I said Sirayak, through Sirayak, we may be reaching a different world. Mm -hmm. So, do you think the Siromalabar church failed to acknowledge Father Emmanuel Tali? I am hearing this for the first time from you and I haven't heard anybody else talking about him in that way. So have we failed to see who he is? Indeed, we have failed tragically to complement somehow what I can do on my own. I approach Father Jacob Tekep, the founder, director of Siri, and the Siri has already founded a Manitrelli Foundation with the support of serious colleagues from Sweden. They know Father Manitrelli, but Indians do not know. And the Syriac immigrants who are interested in Syriac from the Middle East, through his papers, international conferences, or his writings, Manitrelli is known to them. But the Indians, they have failed to recognize the original contributions of Manitrelli. So we have given him Asleta the Hindu, the champion of India. Here, India means the Indian Christianity. Champion of Indian Christianity. Originally, it was established by Father John Bosco, Guru Yogananda. And uh, after his death, since I inherited his enthusiasm and his manuscripts and much of his intellectual interest in Syriac studies, I thought it my duty to revive what he has started in the 1960s. In those days, awards were rare. Nowadays, hundreds of awards are given by church ecclesiastical authorities. Mm -hmm. But Father Uri Yohan established it. So I thought no other name is better suited than Father Emmanuel a co-worker, almost a classmate and a lifelong friend and a fellow traveler in monastery lifestyle. They came from the same village, uh -huh. they study together, mm -hmm. they live together, mm -hmm. they share the same mm -hmm. Syriac spirit. Mm -hmm. So I decided to re-establish the Asaleta the Hindu and give it to Father Emmanuel Dali. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, Father Tekepar will establish Emmanuel Dali. What has the Siro Malabar Church done for Father Emmanuel Dali? The Bedjans breviary has been translated 90% into English by Emmanuel Dali at the insistence of uh, then Literary Commission Chairman Mar Chitlepudi. But I know the misery of Father Emmanuel Dali for the period of translation, sometimes in the middle of the night, sometimes uh, when he was sick, he might be traveling to court time to ask a clarifier doubt, a grammar point, etc. I was always edified by the, the true scholarly spirit of Father Emmanuel He never thought that he should be acknowledged. He loved his church and through loving the Syriac language, he was serving the church. But church might re reconsider, I hope, one day, about this service. After listening to you, I feel even the government of India should have honored him. Surely, the government of India recognizes the promotion of minority languages. And for my, from my viewpoint, the minority language for which the constitution extends to the Christian community is uh, the legal right upon which we cling on during the previous crisis. We, have, we are a minority religion, okay, but we have a cultural heritage through the Syriac language, which came in the th third millennium BC, 3000 years back in the 10th century BC. So, as Professor Segard, Jewish scholar said, if we neglect 3000 year old tradition, what will be left in the cultural horizon of India? Mm -hmm. Just become part and parcel of Indian identity. Mm -hmm. So it is not, not just a Christian. Yeah. Every Indian Christian should, Indian citizen should 
try to promote and study and encourage, preserve yeah. this Hindu yeah. language. Yeah. Yeah. Because no other world language has has been so influential in India, mm. especially South India, mm. for so long period. Malayana was not there, even Tamil was not there yeah. as the present language. Right. You know, the Indian, modern Indian languages were not there on the scene right. when Aramai came. Yeah. So such a long period of history should not be neglected. Okay. So you mean to say, by honoring Father Emmanuel Tully, the government of India will be honoring its own history and it heritage? Will be, it will be the most welcome thing to do. Mm. But mm. church has to do its role, yeah. play its role, to, so that the government might know right. what he has done. Right. Right. Very often, scholars like Emmanuel Tully are known only in small circles. Mm. Mm. Not because they are not, not, not relevant to the world, Unfortunately, our world has been involved in trifles, mm -hmm. trivial matters. Mm -hmm. We fail to see the face of a scholar. And uh, he is a luminary. Wow. 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 Ah, I see that you become emotional. Since we were talking about scholars, uh, could you give a minute to the scholars of the past, like Alexandra the Hindu, uh, Chand, Father Chandi Karagul, and people of that generation who could write poetry yeah. in Syriac, across to hymns in yeah. Syriac? I think the present day foundations of Syro Marabasas exist upon Georgia, Arkadia Givagi is the great and Arkadiyakan Givagi is the less. They were in the 16th century D days of the church. You mean they came church from, in India? Yeah, they came from the Pagalamatan family in Goravarimad. One was leading the church in the days of Chandi Parambe, Alexander, uh -huh. the first native bishop. Then the other was just during the time of the Ember Synod, they had a struggle to keep up the identity of the church. Somehow they survived in the Catholic fold all the same, led the undivided church. But after the Conan Cross Oath, which split the community into two, West Sri was introduced in Kerala in 1665. Mm. And then East Sri was the only language of the Mm. unifying mm. Christian element mm. Mm. from the linguistic theological mm. point. Mm. Mm. Then the new group became followers of West Zurich, gradually. But by that time, there were excellent scholars among the Christians. During the time of Alexander Hedduaya, one of the greatest Zurich poets, his, his name is recognized even in the Middle East. Mm. Unfortunately, his poems are not yet published. Father Vanna Vandara, CMI great scholar, yeah, yeah, our great friend, yeah. our late happy member, he used to, he wanted to edit the Father yeah. Emmanuel Dundee spoke about it. But and the manuscript is at Manaram in Manaram. Monastery. Yeah. Thomas, you are sitting in your library. This is only part of the collection. So tell us about what is so special about this collection of books. What are the uh, special items here? In this room, we find uh, only a miscellaneous collection in Malayalam, in English, in French, in German, and also a few items in Syriac. But most important collection is the room next to where I stay. It's a, one of the most important Syria collections which I could gather in my life. I am pretty sure that some of the items which I have will, will be the unique copy in India. Maybe a manuscript, maybe an old edition. Because Syria books have been neglected for long. I have been collecting them for more than some 30, 35 years. So I am obliged to be grateful to the 
unknown hands through which these old books reached me. They were priests, lay people, monks, sisters, even unknown people, my own students. So it's a lifelong collection of serial books printed in India. I am pretty sure that one of the, some of the process may not have a copy. Luckily, I have been able to inherit the collection of Surya collection of Father John Osko Tottakara or Arias Guru Yohanda. So, it is a patristic collection, it is a biblical collection from Surya grammar, Surya philology, Surya theology. All what is on Surya, in Surya, translated, edited, published. It is a, not complete. This is what one individual could gather. So my, I had been not taking lunch when I was a student in England or in Rome because I will be saving that money to buy books. Second hand, I will be running to <laughs> second hand bookshops. So you will waste yeah. your lunch and save that money? For very many days. <laughs> so quite normal for me. And I forget that about the lunch. I think that um, even if I do, uh, I can survive without lunch for a day or two. But once I lose the second hand book which I was looking for ages, ah, it is there for five pounds. I would pay even fifty pounds. So, my love for Syriac books that has been prompting me to collect books at any cost, from anywhere in the world. But now, I have been sitting here for a long time and uh, my professors used to give me old books. They knew my frantic love for Syriac books. So I have a good collection of Syriac books. All the editions of Sender Frame and the translations and the important studies. Uh, it was on Isaac with me, Jacob Osaru. Whenever I find the opportunity, I get a huge collection from George Gilles as reprinted books on the work as first. Mm -hmm. He was my classmate, a junior too. Ah. It was originally one of my ideas which he took up, reprinting the old books. I was the fastest ever student to take the MST. I took the degree in 1987. So, Oxford University made the MST syllabus for me. Oxford University made the MST, MST syllabus. What is MST? Master of Studies in Syria. And the university then, created a, an area of uh, study just for you? Yeah. We, nobody approached the university to specialize in Syria field before me. Oxford University? Yeah. Take the case of the, those people who took the MST. You will not find a, an MST degree in Syria. They ever taken from the Oxford University until the year 1988 when I took the degree. So, Sebastian Brock, he considers me as one of his first born <laughs> sons <laughs> from India. I am very proud of my teacher. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, that was the tear, which new tear in the history of the university there. Wow. I so, ever I since that department has gone fast. And so, until I reached the, there, there was real really studies for second language, but nobody took the MST, hmm. Master of Studies in So, that was a that is a part of history there. So you made history there? I don't think so. Oh, but it, it happened. It happened. <laughs> but it's a pity that an Indian had to go over there to study Syria. Right. But somehow it worked out like that. But actually my German Benedictine professor from Luxembourg, Father Griebuno, wanted me to go to Iraq, Iraq to specialize in Syria. Then the Iran, Iraq war, war. war was going on. For. It was not safe to go there. So, Sebastian came to Oxford for first philosophy lecture. It was on Sunday Friday. I went to see him and I took down the notes which appeared later as a book, Dominus I. I have the book in my handwritten notes when he was lecturing in 1986. 
I'm same here a few months later. He invited me to study there because I could not go to Iraq. Mm. So, Hopsalma is the second option. And I remained there for five years mm. since I found Sebastian Rock. Ah. And my father, when Victor was alive, there was no meaning in coming back to Rock. Mm. Mm. So I remained with Sebastian Rock. Mm. Providential opportunity for which I am grateful. Maybe I, I didn't plan it. Mm. That, it happened like that. It happened. Yeah. So my doing the seminary ended up at Oxford. Yeah. And creating a new department there, new area of study well, there. It was the beginning, and thereafter, from all over the world, many students came to there, and many took their MSc, and that was the beginning of it. Wow. So it all happened, yeah. not according to my plan. According to God's plan. <laughs> so my love for Syriac is not in vain. Right. That's really great. Tom Suchi, you have a brother in the United States and he lives sister. with his family. My brother and sister live in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. House is some three kilometers away. Oh, okay. They meet. Yeah. Almost daily when they go to the yeah. same by yeah. yeah. Father is also with them. And you wrote a book? No, it's not a book, it's a small booklet for uh, the children of my brother who grows there without mm. knowing anything about the mother church. Okay. My brother insisted that I should write yeah. something for them. Yes. So it might be of use for some yes. yes. Please give a short message to the children of the expatriate Sura uh, Malwar Christian Catholics in America uh, inspired them to study the Syriac language and uh, take an interest. People from Kerala, especially South India, are the most courageous people on earth. They, go, they will be reaching other planets within a few generations. So, as a Malayali, I am proud of the children who are growing there as the citizens of that country which they have adopted. They may not know the language of their forefathers, but they have the same blood in them. Somehow, the cultural links remain. So, I, after all, you are African Indian, or African American, European American, Indian American. So, the identity of the world is evolving. And in the, this historical evolution, Kerala has accepted people from Greece, from Rome, from Ethiopia, from Palestine, from Israel, from Turkey, from Iraq, from Iran, from China. From all of the world people have come to Kerala in the bygone centuries. So Kerala people also go and live in America or other countries. Say welcome. We have only one world to live in, only one earth. And Malayalis are not afraid to travel. Settled in another part of the world because there is only one world. So I appreciate their courage and convictions. All the same, they have to look back to the history. Their origin is not in China. Their origin is not in Greece, not in Germany or Ireland. Their origin, when we look back into history, somewhere in the south of India. That shows the connection remains, the culture, the blood link, the mentality, the philosophy. So studying a bit of St. Thomas Christian history may enrich their viewpoints. The way they live the Christianity in America or in other countries where they are growing up. So better to learn something about the history, past history. So it is a fortune if they can think about the Harappa Mohandadaro civilization, which is, I think, extended even up to the Yadakal caves of Vainad. Yadakal caves of Vainad. So, Brahmi script, which is recently identified there, the indication. Same Brahmi script is found in Gulf countries, in Egypt, in Indochina, in Kerala, in Tamil Nadu, different parts of the world. So, that Brahmi script connects us with the 
Pratanam as much in the precise observation of the Sindhama standard. Already some thousands, more than 100,000 of aquarium items have been discovered. Connecting Kerala with the culture of the international world in the 3rd century BC or 7th century BC or even before the period. So I think that the Sumerian connection with the Harappa Mohanjada civilization somehow extended even up to Kerala. Mm. So Kerala is not the present day Kerala. So present Kerala may, be, may not be that much attractive. The history of a land, of a culture, of a people, of a nation, mm. of a religion is important in reading, reading the history of the world. So history of South India begins in in this in connection with the international commerce. So So you think our children born in America should they should be proud of their history of their forefathers. They are adventurous travelers. The the new generation is still traveling. I am sure they will settle in other planets within the next two, three <laughs> generations. Because our people are intelligent, proud, all the same gifted, talented with great vision, intelligence, other capacities. All that they have to follow the footsteps of their great models. Mm. And India is a land of philosophers, thinkers. Sci practical science may not be that much developed for problems, but practical science is not the factor which inspires life, mm. the philosophy, the thing. The human mind, the grammarians of Sanskrit, grammar uh, Sanskrit shows that the computer language, the best one is Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. Contribution of India. Mm -hmm. And evidently, our forefathers were also great serious scholars. Mm -hmm. Before that, somewhere Sanskrit scholars as well. Right. Because right. Right. our personal heritage is a gradual mingling of various languages, various cultures. So they are experimenting their life in a different world. Yeah. All the best, yeah. all plus. So, please explain this cross you arranged to this to be made. According to tradition, St. Thomas established seven crosses as a indication of the place the worshippers of Jesus should gather. It's a tradition. Of course, the sign of the cross is used by the Christians in the second century. Did they ever use it in the first century? It's a problem. But as far as tradition goes, we have evidence up to the 7th century. So, St. Paul speaks about the importance of the cross. So, in a pagan country, in the 1st century India, there should be some symbol for religion. We might have pointed out as a cross. Later generation might have planted a cross where he made the first Christian gathering. Establish a stone cross as an indication, mark of St. Thomas' identity for every child. The example is there, a sign of indication that St. Thomas has established this cross with the structure or the stone. He gave us an indication where to look for Christ. I stone on the cross. You don't see the figure of the Christ because it's a symbol of the resurrection Christ in the Oriental tradition. Mm. Typically, it is established the identity of the Syriac idea of Christology. Mm. It's a symbol. And you have uh, Syriac? Yeah, the first and the last letters of Syriac or Aramaic or better Estrangela Syriac. Estrangela. The first century, that was popular. Ah. Uh, because uh, that script stands for the first letter Alpha, Alep in Syriac, Aramaic, in Hebrew. 
and the last letter tau. And Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega. And in his mother tongue he says, I am Aleph and Tau. It is written there. And the beginning and the end. Greeks translated into Alpha and Omega. Jesus used them Aleph and Tau. Then Aleph and Tau. So, why should we translate into Malayalam? A into Ha or A into Z? Yeah. He stressed the original. And we preserve the Aleph and Tau. It's Jesus is. So actually it is not a stone. The symbol of the resin Christ. Ah, and what is in the world. middle? It is a small cross. Ah, okay. To indicate the centrality of Jesus, the resin one, the cross. Right. And on the back, there is the star. De ah. Can we say it's a David's star? Or? I don't say it is David's star. Okay. Where from the symbol of the star come in the Middle East? Jews borrowed it from the Assyrians. Oh. And the Assyrian stars. And David. And his forefathers were all immigrants from Mesopotamia. It is a Mesopotamian symbol of the deity, ah, star. Ah. And the star appearing and Jesus became incarnate. We saw the star in the east. Where is the east? Where paradise is. And it's a symbol. So not in the east does not mean Japan or China or India. <laughs> it's a symbolic. Hmm. God has no east, west, south, north, etc. It's a place where the sun rises, where from light comes, and let there be light. And the light was made in the book of Genesis. For a Jewish interpretation, it's a, light is a symbol of God, where from the light comes from God. So it's a pointer to God. Star appeared in the birth of Jesus. We see symbol of the star in the world, the Bible. In Christmas, we right. have a symbol of the star. Yeah. So yeah. ever reminding that Christ is. Yeah. shining over the world and he is the star of David so it brings together the religions, cultures, history even pre-Jewish yeah. even, even if it is pre-Jewish hmm. because Jews emigrated to from this pagan locality to Abra call of Abraham right. call of Abraham makes a change people and the peoples people were people of God were selected from the peoples the hmm. nations hmm. Hmm. so we here in the Syria writings so like a center frame, people from the peoples, that is the Christians. Jews claim to be the people from the peoples, the Christians claim the same. Mm. Actually the connection between Old Testament and New Testament should not be forgotten. And Jews, Jews expect the second coming, which Christians call the second coming, they expect the arrival of Messiah, believing Jews even today, mm. believe mm. that. Mm. We believe that Jesus has come, the Messiah has come. Mm. And we speak about the second coming. Yeah. I have spoken to Jewish scholars who used to say to me, maybe our second, your second coming may be our first coming. A unity between these religions. Right. And even about right. Islam. Right. What is left, uh, this cross is still incomplete, so what is left to be done? Yeah. There will be stone lamps where you need to pour oil and burn the lamps. On the lower deck, there will be four lamps standing for the four Gospels, mm. enlightening the whole world with the message of Christ. Mm. And then seven symbols of perfection, mm. seven churches established by St. Thomas in India, mm. seven churches to which we hear St. John writing in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So seven has a unique significance in the theology of Old Testament and New Testament. So seven Churches established by St. Thomas is represented by seven lamps. And, and on, on the second th step? On the second step, seven lamps. Ah. On the third step, there will be twelve lamps standing for the church. That means the twelve apostles, the foundation of mm. mm. twelve doors. We mm. hear about the, about the twelve tribes in the mm. Old Testament. Mm. Mm. These are all selection, symbols. Not uh, number is not ending mm. Mm. mathematically precise. Mm. Mm. It's a symbol of the selection of God. Mm. He selects his people from all over the world, from America, from India, from Japan, from China, from Russia. He is calling the nation and the nation, the followers of God. Mm. So there is a... So four, seven, twelve, and then? Christ in the middle, at the top. And he is the head of the church. Yes. Church is being built up in the four Gospels, to reach the four corners of the world. Preached in Aramaic first, <laughs> written in Greek by the translators. Yes. So Jesus Christ 
is a translation. That is Isho Mishira. It's original. Mishira was translated into Christos. That is why I say I am not a Christian, I am a Nasrani. So followers of Jesus Nasrani. That was the first name of the followers of Jesus. Hmm. You hear from the second, third century literature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also I say I respect Shemeon Kepa, not Simon Peter. Hmm. Simon Peter is a Greek version, mm, mm, no problem, mm, for the Greeks, mm, mm, but I know the original, mm, mm, because of the Jewish, right. Aramai speaking connection. Right, right, right. Also I say Thomas Liga, the yes. Thomas the Apostle, it is a Greek version, yeah, yeah. they called the yeah, yeah. Didymus. Yeah. So Gospels and the message of Revelation was translated from Aramaic realm into the historical right. period right. in which it was written down. Right. So right. Greeks right. are translated. Right. Original message we get in Hebrew, in Old Testament, then Aramaic portions are there, mm. and the continuation Aramaic, and mm. that Aramaic Christian mm. is mm. reaching mm. our forefathers' hierarchy. Yeah. So yeah. that's the credit yeah. of the Santa yeah. Muscus. It is not a privilege, yeah. but it is a privilege. Yeah. Yeah. A providential yes. plan of God yeah. that shows Santa Christians have a duty to be faithful to the Aramaic heritage. Wow. Thank you, Thomas Hacho. That's, that's your last message. That is your um, most important message. St. Thomas Christians have a duty to be faithful to the Aramaic heritage. Generally, they will be true Christians. Yes. Uh, St. Thomas Christian need not become a European Christian or Latin yeah. Christian yeah. or a Greek Christian. Yeah. He should be an Aramaic Christian, yeah. which is for Father's father. Yeah. And his history goes back in the days of yeah. Solomon. So, we can be proud. Thank you, Hacho. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, most welcome. Yeah. John, can you say the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic? Yeah. Please. Aun duashmeya neskandesh maga tese malkosa kandish kandish kandishat aun duashmeya develens maya vara rambus juhag ire unasha kaen daga kandish kandish kandishat aun duashmeya neskandesh maga tese malkosa nehe sevyana aikana duashmeya Abbara, Howland, the Huma, the Sunakan, Yaumana, was shook, then Hobain, Wahatahin, I cannot dub Hanan, Sokan, Nihayawain, Latan, Nasiona, in Napa San Mindisha, Maton, Dilagi, Malkosa, Uhaila, Utesbata, Lilalam, Almin Amen, Juha Lava, Ula Raval, Rohat Kusha, Lilalam, Alwalam, Amen, you Amen, Aun was Maya. Nascandes Maga, Tessa Marcosa, Candis, Candis, Candisat, Aun Dwasmea, the Valens Maya, Vara Rambos, to hug Ire Unasa Kaenda, Candis, Candis, Candisat. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Amen. What do you feel when you say this prayer in Aramaic? I feel very prestigious that I can tell this much serious. <laughs> <laughs> so you feel proud, huh? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Namaskaram. Namaskaram. Pere? Vargis P.A. Vargis P.A. Uh -huh. Vita Pere? Parathal. Parathal. Sri Anna Padigan. And the Angani prayer is not found on Karana. I'm going to show you. Proud to the Pradhana. You show me the body. Half of the Margam. I give you the Margam. Abraham Joseph. Mesopotamia, 
എന്നാണ് അറിയുന്നത് ഇപ്പോൾ ആരും അതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ എനിക്ക് ഈ ഭാഷ പഠിക്കാൻ ഒരു താല്പര്യമുണ്ട് രണ്ടാമത് അതും ജീവിതത്തിലൊരു ഒരു അനുഭവം ഉണ്ടായത് ഈ ചെറുപ്പകാലത്ത് പള്ളിയിലെ ആരാധനാ ക്രമം സുറിയാനി ഭാഷയിലായിരുന്നു മറ്റ് സുഹൃത്തുക്കളായ മറ്റ് കുട്ടികളോടൊപ്പം തന്നെ കുർബാനിക്ക് കൂടുകയെന്നതിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് ഞാൻ പള്ളിയിൽ പോവുകയും ഇതിൻ്റെ ഒരു പുസ്തകം മലയാളത്തിൽ ട്രാൻസ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേറ്റ് ചെയ്ത പുസ്തകം വാങ്ങി അത് പഠിക്കുക പഠിക്കാൻ ശ്രമിക്കുകയും ചെയ്തു വീട്ടിൽ കൊണ്ടുവന്നു അങ്ങനെ ഇരിക്കുമ്പോൾ എൻ്റെ പിതാവ് ഇത് കേട്ട് എന്നോട് അർത്ഥം ഗ്രഹിച്ച ശേഷം അർത്ഥം ഗ്രഹിച്ച് ഈ പ്രാർത്ഥന നീ പഠിക്കണം എന്നാവശ്യപ്പെട്ടു അല്ലാതെ ഇതിങ്ങനെ പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ട് കാര്യമായില്ല എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു അതോടെ ഞാൻ ആ ശ്രമം ഉപേക്ഷിക്കും പക്ഷേ മനസ്സിൽ ഇനി ഒരു അവസരം കിട്ടുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഈ ഭാഷ പഠിക്കണം എന്ന് എനിക്ക് താല്പര്യം ഉണ്ടായി അത് വളരെ കാലത്തിന് ശേഷം റിട്ടയർമെൻറ്റും ഒക്കെ കഴിഞ്ഞ് സമയം കിട്ടിയപ്പോൾ ഇത് പഠിക്കാൻ തുടങ്ങി ഈ തോമസിനെ പറ്റി എങ്ങനെ അറിഞ്ഞു എൻ്റെ ഒരു സ്നേഹിതൻ ഇവിടുത്തെ സഹവിദ്യാർത്ഥിയെ ഈ ബാങ്കിൽ തന്നെ ഞാൻ ജോലി ചെയ്തിരുന്ന ചെയ്തിരുന്ന ബാങ്കിൽ തന്നെ ഒരു മറ്റൊരു ഓഫീസറുണ്ട് മിസ്റ്റർ പുനൂസ് എന്നാണ് അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ പേര് അദ്ദേഹമാണ് തോമസ് അച്ഛനെ പറ്റി എന്നോട് പറയുന്നത് അദ്ദേഹം ഇവിടെ വരുന്നുണ്ട് കൂടെ വരികയാണെങ്കിൽ പഠിക്കാൻ നല്ല സൗകര്യങ്ങൾ ചെയ്തിരുന്നു എത്ര നാളായി ഇവിടെ വന്നു തുടങ്ങിയിട്ട് ഇപ്പോൾ ഒരു വർഷത്തിന് മേലായി അപ്പോൾ എന്തുമാത്രം എന്തെങ്കിലും വായിക്കാമോ വായിക്കാം എന്താണ് വായിക്കാൻ പോകുന്നത് ഇത് ലൂക്കയുടെ സുവിശേഷം രണ്ടാം അധ്യായമാണ് വായിക്കുന്നത് പല ഘടകങ്ങളുണ്ട് എനിക്ക് തോമസിനെ നേരത്തെ പരിചയമുണ്ടായിരുന്നു തോമസ് അച്ഛൻ പരിചയമുണ്ടായിരുന്നു അതൊരു കാരണം പിന്നെ ദൈവശാസ്ത്രപരമായ കാര്യങ്ങൾ ഒരു ചെറിയ ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു അതൊക്കെ ഒരു കാരണം അപ്പോൾ സ്ത്രീയാനി ഭാഷ പഠിച്ചാൽ ദൈവശാസ്ത്രത്തിൽ ദൈവശാസ്ത്രത്തിൻ്റെ കലവറയുടെ ഒരു താക്കോല് കിട്ടുമെന്നാണോ വിചാരിക്കുന്നത് പഠിച്ചു വന്നപ്പോഴാണ് എനിക്ക് ഒരു കാര്യം ബോധ്യമായത് യൂറോപ്യൻ ക്രിസ്ത്യാനിറ്റിയും സ്ത്രീ ക്രിസ്ത്യാനിറ്റിയും രണ്ടാണ് വന്നത് അപ്പോൾ അത് ഒന്ന് ബൈബിളിനോട് ഒട്ടിച്ചേർന്നിരിക്കുന്നു ഭാരതീയ സംസ്കാരത്തോട് ചേർന്നിരിക്കുന്നതാണ് മറ്റേത് ഇവിടെ പറിച്ച് നടപ്പെട്ടതാണ് പക്ഷേ ഇത് രണ്ടും ഇപ്പോൾ ഒന്നായിട്ടാണ് മനുഷ്യർ കാണുന്നത് ഒന്ന് ഭാരതീയമാണ് മറ്റേത് വൈദേശികമാണ് പക്ഷേ ദൗർഭാഗ്യവശാൽ നമ്മുടെയും വൈദേശിക ക്രിസ്ത്യാനിറ്റിയുടെ ഭാഗമായിട്ടാണ് എണ്ണപ്പെടുന്നത് എനിക്ക് സുബിയാൻ ഭാഷ പഠിക്കണം എന്ന് വളരെ ആഗ്രഹം ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു കാരണം ഈശോയുടെ ഭാഷയോട് ഏറ്റവും അടുത്ത് നിൽക്കുന്ന ഈശോ സംസാരിച്ച ആളുമായിട്ട് ഏറ്റവും അടുത്ത് നിൽക്കുന്ന ഒരു ഭാഷയാണ് സുബിയാൻ അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഞാനൊരു പരിസ്ഥ സുറിയാനി സഭാ കുടുംബത്തിൽപ്പെട്ട അംഗമാണ് അപ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ ആരാ ആരാധനാക്രമം പരിസ് സുറിയിലായിരുന്നു അപ്പോൾ ഭാഷയെ കൂടുതൽ പഠിക്കുമ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ ദൈവശാസ്ത്രത്തോടും അതുപോലെ ആരാധനാക്രമത്തിൻ്റെ ആത്മാവിനോട് കൂടുതൽ നമുക്ക് മനസ്സിലാക്കുവാൻ സാധിക്കുമെന്ന്
Oh, <laughs> 